All right, so we're going to kick off. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, my name is Yewande Akomalafekalu, but you can just call me Wendy. Um, I lead the storytelling team at Flutter Wave. And if you've been joining us for the past, I think, eight, seven weeks now, seven weeks, we've been doing this for a while now. Um, so as you know, today is, um, we're having the Grow My Business webinar. It is what we have been doing at Flutter Wave to equip businesses with the information and the tools and resources that they need to survive the pandemic and also kind of thrive beyond the pandemic as well. For today, we have Janet Matruka, who is a digital influencer and also um, the founder of ATC Digital Academy from Kenya. She's going to be speaking to us about packaging, packaging your business for success on social media today. Janet, do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a nice actually to see you, Yawande and Zena, for the second time. And thank you so much for having me here. For those who are joining us, thank you and welcome. Uh, looking forward to the session. Thank you so much. Um, and then also we have Zainab. Um, Zainab is a vertical lead on our growth team and with a focus on small medium businesses. And she'll be talking through um, the opportunities that Flutterwave has available and the tools Flutterwave has available for businesses to utilize and take advantage of so that they can get more visibility, make more sales, even while we're still surviving through a pandemic. So um, just some house rules. Um, you can ask your work. We're going to do um, Janet's section first, and then we're going to go into Zainab's section, and then we'll do a general Q&A. If you have questions, please feel free to use the Q&A se um, section on the webinar. Mm -hmm. Throw your questions in there so you don't forget. We will come back to it and we'll address it as many as possible um, when we get to the Q&A section. Um, some of the questions may be general questions, which we'll answer as, like on the fly, but we do have a Q&A section. Um, and then also we are recording this and this is gonna be available for you guys um, by Wednesday at the latest. We'll send the link via email so you guys have access to the information by Wednesday at the latest. So I'm gonna pass you on to Janet now. Um, Janet, you have your presentation ready to share your screen? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank, right. you. thank you. So I'll just go ahead and roll and hopefully uh, you you're going to take notes at the same time, ask questions as I continue. So the session for today is about packaging your brand on social media for business success. Uh, for those who haven't interacted with me for some time, I am a digital marketing strategist. So social media is one of my offices, actually to my major office where most of the time I have to be there, check on brands, manage them and help brands grow in terms of influencing, doing the strategies and content creation. So Expect to learn something on that, but if you feel like you have questions, please uh, make use of the Q and A question uh, section. So we will start with objectives. I'll touch on um, minute. I will touch on uh, terminologies which social media platforms should a brand choose for business? How to grow into a successful business on social media? The do's and don'ts when setting up your business accounts on social media? Because I know this is where most of the people actually have a lot of questions. And as we go ahead, you'll be able to learn and at least know where to ask to. On the terminologies, I will basically touch on at least four of them. That is one, brand. A brand is what people think of an individual or a business. Some people look at Janet Machuka and they think this is a brand. Because in one way or the other, I have gone through the branding process of creating a strong identity for myself in the market where I operate, that is social media or digital at large. Uh, social media are uh, the platforms that we use to communicate to people and uh, they are for social reasons, but in one way or the other, we are trying to actually uh, bring business into it so that we can grow at the same time, gain some benefits out of it. So social media, as you all know, there are platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, on business growth, now this is where we are going to actually dwell a lot on. Um, it's actually how you want to be known in a way that you will expand, you will gain out of it. 
in terms of customers and values. So it's every success of a brand in business, be, in, be it being known more, expanding its numbers, both on customers and revenue. Our social media analytics, that is the reach, engagement, lead, replies, shares, among others. Numbers from all social media activities for your brand page. This is where after you have gone through the campaign period, you have finished and checked, maybe you are, you are supposed to do the campaign or uh, to check through your activities after 28 days, after 30 days. You use the social media analytics to check through to see did you attain your KPIs, did you meet your target, did you gain something out of it. And this is where we use the monitoring tools, which actually can be social media listening tools, they can be analytics tools, they can be um, scheduling tools. In short, they are tools that help businesses get their activities on growth or decline. So which social media platforms should brands choose for business? Uh, before we think about which, you have to find out first on these uh, things that I'm going to talk about. One, know your goals and targets. Are you going to sell? Are you going to do brand awareness? I want leads out of the campaign or the, the, the social media usage, the way you're in your content? Do you want conversations with people? Two, find out where the audience is. And this is where actually most of the people wonder, how am I going to know my audience is on, on Facebook and not on Instagram? Do a research. There are so many researches on reports on uh, maybe 2020, what are companies looking forward to, uh, uh, looking forward to like in terms of trending on social media. The, top, the main things that trend, what happened in last year that most of the brands got the best out of it. How many people are on Facebook? How many people are on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn? And what kind of demographics do they have? So do the research. You can do the research on internet from your competitors, previous statistics about different audience and demographics, the audience demographics on each platform you are interested to join as a brand. Your business ability to invest in marketing. If it is about advertising, do you have the money? If it's about the brand management, do you have experts who are able to do that? Do you have the, the, the strategists who are going to help you plan a very good strategy on how to go about your posting, your relation with people, the way you are uh, to, uh, going to engage with them on other social media related activities, the ability to hire social media experts. Another one, this is where sometimes I usually uh, say it's better to hire if you believe or if you know you're not going to give an almost perfect customer service. Because on social media is not like uh, the traditional way of marketing where you just follow up on the calls of people who ask um, on, or wrote something and then added it on the boxes that we usually ask, they ask boxes in, in, in the offices. Social media is a platform, are platforms where you have to respond to people immediately. You will have to be there presently. At least schedule which times will you be, will your, your brand pages very, be very active for, so that people can ask questions, can be replied to. Sometimes, you might have a lot of things to do um, as an individual as much as you will want to manage your brand's page. And so it reaches a point you don't know what to do. You post once and then you disappear. You have your page, you, you have your account, you have your business page. So sometimes it becomes very hard for you to go about it. Look for somebody who you know is an expert. Experts doesn't really mean those people who have already done it and the best at their thing. They actually ask a higher pay for that. Uh, there are people who are growing and they are learning. They, 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 the way they can, the way you can uh, talk to them, engage with them, can be so uh, successful in that you use a lower budget for you to grow your business on the digital platform. So, what are the do's and the don'ts on social media? First of all, we have to look at the do's and then we go to the don'ts. The profile. Use your brand logo and be consistent, consistent across the platforms. And then I haven't said don't use your brand logo on your 
on your main profile. That's a picture because currently we have uh, we usually most of the platforms is like Facebook, we have LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, Instagram doesn't have that. They'll give you a chance to do a background photo or a banner and uh, the, the main profile. You can uh, work around that and make the main profile to, co to consist of uh, the, the at least something catchy like a photo of your employees and maybe the background will now have something of what you do and then the plus the logo of the brand. So at least have that. But if you don't have, you can interchange in that in the front and the, the tiny one, the circular one, you can have the can have the logo and then the background you can have a, a very nice photo of your employees or one of the activities or the products that you 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 sell or you want to market uh the cover photo i think i've already described that for twitter and facebook and linkedin add a photo or graphic design that describes your brand name that's like a dish adding adding something more to your profile to tell people about your business the bio who are you what do you stand for what does your brand do you can do and you can you can add another social media account instead of the link section if you don't have a website and this actually applies on linkedin twitter all the platforms i know that i have, uh, I have already mentioned twitter facebook instagram and linkedin you can add a link to your your brand's page, your brand's website. You can add, if you don't have a brand website and you are just getting into the social media, you can use a, a link to a specific, uh, um, let me say, the, the media house or where you have been featured, if you want people to read more about you. You can use the, you can use the other social media platforms. You feel like if people click the link, they can be able to see more that you do than on that particular social media platform. Your pinned post. Pin a tweet or a, or, or a post on Facebook page that describes more about your brand. You know, most of the people uh, don't actually make use of this pin, pinned post. And I will want to emphasize that kindly make use of it because that actually gives you a chance to tell more about your brand before somebody goes through all your posts on social media what does he or she expect so the pinned post is like a um an elongate elongation of your profile your bio okay your handle username or official name make it similar across the, all the platforms why because you want people to identify you easily you want people to relate you want people to know yes this is uh, africa tweet chat this is janet machuka it's and it's not the other janet machuka just imagine if i used uh, my uh, africa tweet chat uh, for, uh, Africa to chat username on Twitter, the different different one, Instagram a different one, Facebook a different one. It will be very is difficult for somebody to realize this is the same brand. Control your privacy and security settings. Some people actually have been crying, oh, my brand page was hacked. How uh, can I retrieve it? But you have all the chances to control your privacy. Add a two-factor authentication. Put your business account public for everyone to view, but regulate. There is no need of having a business account and then you put it private. And then you expect people to know about it, to, to talk about it, to see what you share. Put it public, but make sure that you control all the other privacy settings and security that you know very well if you let them known to the public, they can be harmed. Point of note, have the same brand voice on each social media platform. If you need to tweak, do it a little. The don'ts. Don't use different logos, bios, contact numbers, descriptions on different profiles. Mm -hmm. People want to know this is the same brand that is on Twitter and the same one on Instagram and the same one on Facebook. At least have some consistency. Avoid spamming. This is actually where I talk more of content and I love it when it's a discussion of content. Um, when you avoid spamming is when you forget about looking at your brand as only sharing your services and 
your, uh, your products. There is more that you can, your brand can do other than that. There's a lot of content you can focus on other than that. As much as you want to push that to people to see what you are selling, what you stand for, avoid being too salesy. People hate when a brand spams a lot of content. The same thing over and over again without really giving them something slightly different but still in line with that particular business. Avoid poor grammar and content construction. This is where you need a content creator. If you don't know how to go about the marketing, you can do six to eight posts per day on Twitter and one to three posts on, um, on Facebook, uh, at least one on Instagram. Uh, but currently we are actually at a better place where we can you make use of our stories, that is WhatsApp, WhatsApp stories, Instagram stories and Facebook stories. We can actually leverage your needs to share more if you can't share more on your feeds. Avoid excessive use of hashtags. I know most of the people think if I use more than, more than five uh, hashtags on Twitter, my brand will be noticeable. Okay. It can be, but people actually tend to shy away from a post, a tweet that has a lot of hashtags. But on Instagram, actually, you can do that. On, um, on Facebook, you can't. You have to regulate the number of hashtags that are used. On LinkedIn, the same. So at least know what kind of uh, hashtag are you going to use uh, and um, why should you use it and um, how many. So for, in, for instance, on, Insta, on Twitter, the best number of hashtags you can use are two. That is the best. Avoid posting in all capital letters. You're not shouting to these people. You want to attract them. You want them to engage with your content. You want them to constantly love you or like you or want to be part of your community as a brand. Avoid that. But if you have to use it, use it when you're stressing something, but not all, all, over, the, all, all over the post or the text. So how to grow, how do you go about growing a, a successful business on social media? I have segmented it into different sections. And so I will start with the first section, which is content creation. Come up with a content strategy. Uh, this will guide you on how to post, what to post, and who will be in charge of your posting, and how will you measure the success of the executed content on your social media platform. A content strategy is basically a plan. It's always good to come up, up, up with a plan so that you can know which ideas are you going to share, how can you get people to, to add on into the, your, your strategy, your plan, so that at least you'll be able to engage people, you are going to inform people, you are going to educate people, you are going to entertain people. I haven't said that you go all out to be a very entertaining brand, but sometimes people want to that aspect of a, a, a social brand. They want to see you as a social brand because social media platforms were just not created for business. They were created for social reasons, but now business are, the businesses are there. Don't forget that people actually are on social media to, to look at all these aspects of socialism. Uh, how to post. You can employ the use of scheduling tools such as HubSpot, Hootsuite, TweetDeck for Twitter. Uh, for how to post, you know, sometimes people wonder, how am I going to do uh, this posting of the content that now we have created? And um, do I have to be on the social media platforms all the time so that I can be able to post? No, there are so many social, uh, social media scheduling tools that you can use so that it can be easier for you when you are handling other things. Like currently I'm doing this webinar. Um, if I had already scheduled my content on Twitter, it will have been actually be going live as I continue talking here. What to post? Use the right content for your network. Mix the different types, that is videos, infographics, images, texts, graphic images, testimonial screenshots. And what to post, I don't mean what you post on Twitter. Post it exactly the same way on Instagram, the same way on Facebook, the same way on LinkedIn. Do your research. Find out what, how, do, how, how do LinkedIn 
people consume their content? How do Instagram consume their content? Facebook, Twitter, what kind of sizes do you have to use in terms of the video length, in terms of the infographics, in terms of the graphic images, the text? If you had to use the screenshots, how, how, how far should you go to sharing people's um, DMs, those direct messages they sent you? Do they, do they know that you're really sharing them? Have you talked to them? Don't just share because you have, the, um, you have to share. Always ask. That's where people can give you their consent, okay? When, how, and how many times? Post regularly and consistently. For Twitter, the best time to post is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Nevertheless, you can post all day, but depending on which topic. For instance, if, you, uh, if it's basically a business, not that we are talking about a business, the best time to post is from that time. Why? At least from the morning hours, you would have shared something that might be outside your business. And then now you're talking about um, your, your product. And that's when will people want to, to check and see what is happening so that you can give your time, your, your time, yourself time and the people time to engage with your content, to, to ask questions for you to reply as the day continues. Uh, a tweet life is approximately 18 minutes. You can do up to 10 tweets in a day. Twitter, the good thing about Twitter, there's a lot of content that, that is coming in within seconds. So kindly, you can leverage on that. Do as many tweets as you can, but don't spam your, your followers. On Facebook, best days are Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, Sunday is actually the worst day, as much as most of the people will, will look forward to. We look forward to sharing something on Facebook on Sunday. Why? Because people are actually focusing on more on church, family, and then maybe if your brand is related to family, that's where actually it can do better. Otherwise, people are less on social media on Sundays. Uh, LinkedIn, post regularly or post early in the mornings during weekdays. Okay. And uh, why do I actually say in the morning hours? Because people most of the time use a look at LinkedIn as a newspaper where they will want to see what is happening. Uh, people are sharing something about their business. They are giving motivation about what they are doing on their platforms in terms of the business. Uh, audience content. It's way to be a very a, a brand that is loved by people is to share what you believe somebody has said positive or respond to people or screenshot a very nice testimonial and then you post it. Actually, this is the best way to go about organic growth. You don't have to think about adding your uh, sponsored uh, posts so you doesn't a budget um you're go, you, you're not thinking about having to pay even influencers but if you constantly focus on the organic uh, content that is coming from your audience who are sharing their experiences sharing their their feedback about a certain product or saying something nice about you if you 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 share it they will realize that you love you you're actually listening you are seeing them and you are approving that yes they're doing something good. Uh, they're giving you something worthwhile, and there's some much benefit out of each of either of you. So, B section B is marketing. Importance of strategies. Kindly jump on the social media. Start from anywhere. They wonder, oh, I'm doing everything, but nothing is coming out of it. But are you? Have you planned it? Even when you are not launching a campaign make sure that you come up with a social media marketing strategy that will give you a chance to always be planned on what you will do on your pages to be aligned with your business goals having targets every year actually i know most of you or some of you might be writing the targets for the, the years i know this year was kind of messed up but um I know in one way or the other, you still have your goals hold dear to your heart and you really want to achieve them. It's the same thing, actually. You have to always have goals that you want to attain. Whatever you're going to, remember you're using your effort. You're using your, you, you're using, uh, your time. At the same time, you are, it's like you're investing on people and on your business, on the digital. This is a whole new platform where 
uh, we are actually trying, we are disrupted by all this digital marketing. How are you going to plan it? So ways to execute your marketing to focus on that. You can encourage your employees to be sharing the experiences about the products or services you deal with as a business. I know this is where actually I usually find most of the people shy away from it because they don't want to be involved with their companies or with their brands they work for. And so most of the time they be like, no, unless they pay me for me to do that. And that's where most of the time a brand goes ahead and be like, okay, let me get, let me get an influencer. Let me get um, uh, um, a, a social media ads expert to do that. So if you are a CEO, if you are one of the big uh, personnel on that business and in chat as in, and as in, and is in, in charge of the employees, make sure that you encourage each other on how you can share the experiences about the product. Because this is actually one of the best ways to grow because people tend to believe more in the employee than people who consume the products. Find the right influencers within your niche to help you amplify the brand messages and create conversations around your target audiences. I'm influencer as Janet Machuka, and sometimes I get people from the political side asking me to be part of their their, their amplification of content. Some of them might be from the uh, the beer industry, but that is not my niche. That is not where I actually engage my audience on. So, what I usually recommend is. Okay. find the right influencers and if possible find brand fit influencers influencers you know you wouldn't have a hard time actually going through with them uh, with the campaign and at the same time they will give you the conversions you wanted they'll give you they will give you the return on investment okay you can also leverage on your organic feedback from your audience but first encourage them to share and if they are sharing willingly employ social media listening tools to be able to check who is talking or mentioning your brand on your social media pages and collect leads from your competitors. I know most of the people just count, oh yes, I have 10 leads. But after that, they just sit on them and they'll be like, okay, I expect to have at least somebody who will ask me something. If you use Brand24, for instance, that's one of the tools um, for social media listening. You can add your competitors, or you can use another tool called Awaru. You can add your competitors. For instance, if you say, um, I, I launched my Africa Twitch Chat Academy, and then maybe I want to do a lot of social media listening and see how, what kind of people can I target. I will go ahead and feed in some of the of the brands that do exactly what I do, so that I can see people who might be talking negative about them in one or the in one way or the other. You're pissed off, and if you give them a better chance, they will actually go with it. How can you reach out to them? To them, okay. How to prove your marketing impact? On marketing, you have to always prove your marketing impact, and that's why we always have the key performance indicators. That's why we have the return on investment. And that's why we always check this through the analytics. Uh, section C, um, I'll touch on advertising and sponsorship. Of course, the same platform. You can advertise on Facebook, we can do it on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or LinkedIn. Uh, but before you go ahead with the advertisement, make sure that you have a goal conversions to do you want the conversions to website clicks do you want more reach do you want more engagement do you want more likes profile follows messaging figure out your goal clearly so that when you are doing we are, when you are going through the whole campaign it will be very easy for you to to check through the analytics and analyze your whole campaign Section D, building relations and referrals. So how do you go about building relations and how can relations building can help you your business, uh, can help your business grow on social media? One, I usually encourage people to join Twitch chats. And actually I can, uh, can tell you for free, I have so many individuals who can testify that they have grown out of Twitch chats. The way, the, the way you present your brand, you can actually jump in and, um, Come in for your brand and then uh, uh, appear on a certain Twitch chat. 
you represent your brand in, in, in that and then you make sure in one or the other way you can have the brand logo on that t-shirt so that people can see you, that people can see you representing your brand. And uh, before I continue actually explaining this, as much as we are building businesses, remember, they can't grow on their own without people. It's people for people people for people you have to get people who are going to help you build it and you have to share it to people and talk about it to people so find the niche groups on these tweet chats the webinars like the one that you are doing right now there are people who actually are here so that they can learn they can engage they can build relations with other people they believe they can get something out of it in a long-term relationship or a partnership so engage with people learn more from people join africa twitch chat every wednesday 9 oh, that is 7 pm west african time so that you can learn with people La engage ask questions about social media because that's where actually you'll get free knowledge from the experts two encourage your employees to represent your business on different online sessions and be proud to mention the brand name without any limitation so long as it is good for a good cause i know sometimes it's good to put guidelines for your company on how you be uh, your employees should behave and how they should go ahead and uh, represent the brand but at the same time don't squeeze them too much to a point where they feel like okay i'm actually working here just to get the cash but uh, or to get the salary but at the end of the day if I, i'm given a chance to work out i'll work out and i wouldn't even like doing anything to do with them if you constantly build a good engagement a relationship with your employees as um as a brand owner it is and encourage them to to appear on social media sometimes you can actually uh, pay for them webinars which maybe you might be might be charging so that they can be part of it in that way they will actually want to talk about your brand anytime and they will use it as an example in most of the things that they do and they'll be proudly sharing it so proudly share other people's great testimonies about your business and how they have gained from your service i think i have replied to this over and over again and uh, this is where i believe brand most brands on social media are going wrong because they just want to post their content and their content alone from their pages and forget their people they are constantly engaging with you engage with me and i engage with you actually that's the current rule on social media if you're not engaging with me i'm done with you so at least once in a while the brand should um think about uh, engaging other people's content and then sharing this testimony don't we just ask answering the questions the cues people are asking and then you're there with your automated uh, texts on how the, they should go about the, the request or the question they asked attend offline sessions i know currently we have this covid 19 but as, um, i believe everything will go back to normal very soon so when we'll be back to normal and we'll be able to attend our offline workshops showing up on workshops is one having your uh, brand card it's called the um, the cards the, the cards the business cards uh, having your business card is two sharing it with other people is three but how more will i know that you are appeared actually on the on the session did you take the pictures and share talked about it did you connect with other people did you share experiences of each other because actually i believe offline sessions as where it gives you a chance to interact with someone on a personal level and if you approach them in a better way sometimes they can be able to, to tell you things that you wouldn't have actually known about how they go about their brand uh, success on social media so leverage on that it is easier to grow okay just a moment it's easier to grow actually that way. So another one is employ chatbots. If you have a massive audience to help uh, on social media, kindly make sure that you have uh, chatbots that can help you go about your social media management. And this is where actually I talk about uh, frequently asked questions. Most of the time they usually call them FAQs, where people you know very well are going in one or the other, they'll ask some questions. Having chatbots will help you actually uh, go about that because you wouldn't 
you, 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 there is no need of employed someone to help you to constantly uh, answer those questions. For instance, currently, um, last week, yeah, to the, the other week, um, Flutterwave launched their social it was a tool for selling on digital. And uh, I know most of the people, there's some questions which will come over and over again. And um, they will need to hire social media uh, managers to constantly reply to them. Yes, okay. Um, employing the customer service is one. But two, do you have a chat bot in that? If you know some questions are constantly asked and sometimes they might not need that personal or personalized um, response, can they be part of, can they work when the people are not there, when the, the customer service is not there, they are maybe sleeping or they are at home or something came up. It's good to employ them. And currently I've seen actually a number of companies coming up with their own chatbots and that is so recommendable. Uh, hire social media managers who are good at heart to heart marketing. When I'm talking about heart to heart marketing, this is where it's highly personalized in a way that someone feels like you are directly talking to me and you're really listening to me and you really want to help me from the way you are talking. As much as you might not give me a, res a positive response from what I asked, at least there is that relationship that you build in that in one or the other that customer will go ahead and start um advocating for your brand because the way because of the way you the social media manager responded to them so they understand what is humanizing and personalizing a brand and execute it perfectly they will help you do that they can also put feelings aside when responding to bitter negative pissed off customers some we are human all of us sometimes we get harsh comments from our audience from our clients but social media managers and gurus tend to cap their feelings, put them aside as much as sometimes they might really hurt and you really want to respond back in a way that you want to show, oh yes, okay. You thought you knew, we'll show you how we knew. Try all your best to calm down your nerves. And if you feel like you're gonna, you can't respond at that particular time, get another person. But it is recommendable for them to constantly go through um, a training session that the social media managers so that they can be able to withstand some of the uh, the, the posts or comments some of these uh, customers make. Uh, section F, I'll talk about analytics. Now, this is where actually you have done your campaign, you planned all your, your content creation, you, you have executed, and you there. Yeah, 30 days have passed, a month has passed, and you want to see, are you really doing something good? And on each and every stage, stage actually, you can make sure that you, you, you can use a, an, an, a tool, a social media tool, from listening tools, scheduling tools, analysis, analysis tools, and monitoring tools. I actually didn't single out, uh, didn't uh, put them differently because most of the current um, tools tend to do all these works at a go. So you can leverage on Hub Talk Walker, um, HubSpot, you put suit, social report, social pilot, keyhole, Awario, brand twenty four. Um, I like Talk Walker more because most of the time, before you think about employing it anywhere on your social media, you will have to go through. You must actually go through, uh, uh, like um. A dummy. They will show you like a dummy on how to go about the steps. How will you do? How, what will you get out of it? And the good thing about it is the fact that you'll get somebody who, someone who will take you through, so that you can know what is what. So wrapping up, I know most of you might be tired and wondering uh, when will I finish, so you can ask your questions. Give yourself as a business to a chance to make mistakes, so that you can learn out of them. Don't try to be perfect as a business. Growth is gradual and any social media mistake we might make doesn't mean that is the end of our business. You realize that positive criticism also boosts a business growth because it gives a brand, it gives the brand employees and employers a chance to gather ideas to better 
their business. So look at every step mistake you make, the, the kind of backlash you can get from your audience as a way of learning and as a way of collecting ideas on how they really want you to package it. So open yourself for ideas, open yourself for criticism and uh, open yourself for negative feedback. And so I actually put some uh, more right there. I think I was, uh, uh, that is where my presentation was, uh, was reaching. I have to step aside now. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, so Zainab is going to go through the tools available. This was really insightful. I think people have some questions, but we'll address them um, during our Q&A session. Um, but Zainab is going to go through the tools available as um, that Flutterwave has available for businesses to utilize, and then we will go straight into the Q and A session. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Janet. Um, that was a very good one. Um, so, without wasting much time, I will go straight into um, what Flutterwave has been doing this past couple of weeks um, for business owners. Um, let me just quickly share my screen. Right, um, just like Wendy has said earlier, there's a couple of initiatives which we have put together as Flutterway for business owners, um, especially around what's been going on um, with the COVID-19 pandemic, businesses having to shut down, even though there's been an easing of the lockdown, you know, it hasn't gone back to normal. I mean, you can't expect for everything to return 100% to normal, even though they uh, say today that all restrictions are lifted. Most people People would still be skeptical so most people would rather do whatever it is they need to do from the comfort of their homes or offices without having to physically go to different locations so there is going to be a change it's going to be a shift um, going forward um, you know post COVID like um, everyone says so what has Waterwave um, as an organization done um, to sort of respond to what's going on and ensure that businesses are able to stay afloat um, we've put together a couple of um, initiatives so to speak um, the first one is this grow my business webinar which we've been having um, this is the seventh edition so we've been doing this every Monday morning um, for the past seven weeks and it's basically just bringing together um, industry experts in different fields to sort of speak to business owners and let them know what they need to do um, the sort of um, information they need to have access to the right tools um, how they can ensure their business stays open all through this period and also how to thrive even post COVID. So that's uh, why we have someone like um, Janet, who's um, an expert in her field all the way from Kenya. She's here to speak to us um, regarding how you can package your brand on social media, which is something that's very, very important in a time such as this. We know everybody's online now because you can't move around as much as you used to. You can't go to offices. You can't go to the spa. You can't go to the cinema. So most of the time you are at home. And then when you're home, what are you doing? You are online, really. Um, 80% of the time you're online. So it's a very, very um, strategic topic to deliver at this particular time. And um, this is this is just some of the things that we've been doing over the course of the last few weeks. So um, like I said earlier, this is the seventh edition. We've had a couple of um, industry experts over you know the last couple of weeks come to talk to you about what we've been doing, um, about what you can do as a business owner. Um, so from people from Google, we come to talk to you about you know ensuring that your business is listed to um, you know, different, different works. Um, last week, we had um, someone from SME 100 Africa coming to talk to you about how, you know, you should ensure your business is able to scale. So basically, that's what we're doing um, as Flutter Wave. We've put together this webinar for business owners to give them the right tools, the right equipment to ensure that they're able to stay afloat. Um, something, another initiative we're doing is the Google My Business um, initiative. So I don't know um, how many of us know about Google My Business. It's basically a tool to ensure visibility of your business, of your brand. Um, today, if you go to, um, I hope you can hear me. If you go to the internet today and you do a search of your business name, um, the chances are it probably might not um, 
pop up or even if it does it might not be among the first you know three four five um, listings that come up so with google my business um what flutterwave is doing for all business owners is we've partnered with google to list your business on google my business for free so what this means is if you are a supermarket for example um located in ikeja and then somebody goes to google and types in um, where can I buy toothbrush in Ikeja, for example? If you're listed on Google My Business, then your business name will be among the top um, locations that would come up. And not only that, um, in addition to showing visibility, it also gives additional information about your business. So you can list things like um, your phone number. Um, and then from that Google search, the person can actually just click on call and call you directly. Um, you can list your email address. You can list your opening hours. So if you open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., for example, you can list it there. And so if a person is doing a search by 9 p.m., they can see that your business is closed at that time. So they know um, in their subconscious so I can just give a call tomorrow or I can send an email because all those details are listed or if they are close by and you put your um, address then they can go um, visit you so that's um, an initiative that we've also put together with Google and the beauty about this is the listing is absolutely free all you need to do is have an active Flutterwave account and um, you opt in for the free listing on Google My Business and then um, yeah we'll take it from there so that's another initiative that we've put together um, as Flutterwave for business owners to help them thrive um, Another solution we've put together is called the Flutterwave Store. Um, this is what Janet was talking about um, when she said that we launched a product for online um, sales. It's basically just for a business owner, you are able to list all of your products online and then people can um, access that link where you've listed your products and then um, make purchases and then you get that notification. So basically it's just like a mobile website that you can carry along with you. Um, so there are a lot of businesses today that are affected. I know some of them have had some sort of gradual opening. So like a restaurant, for example, um, you can go in and order, but you can't sit in to eat. So you know, for those that don't necessarily want to leave the comfort of their homes to go and um, physically place an order, they can go to that restaurant Flutterwave store. If that restaurant has a Flutterwave store account, the restaurant can list all of their food. Um, so if they do soups, if they do stews and all that, they can list it, put the prices, and then you as a customer can just go directly to that link, um, select what you want, um, put in your delivery details and then the restaurant delivers that to you the next day or two days time depending on whatever agreement they have so that's basically what the flutter wave store does it's very seamless is straightforward um, once you have a flutter wave account you can create a store in a matter of minutes you can list your products um, on that flutter wave store and you can also upload images of your products so if you sell clothing for example it will be a fantastic one for you especially now where um, clothing is um, should I say another sector that has been affected by COVID-19 because before now you could go into a clothing store and try on clothes um, if this doesn't fit you can take it back maybe you have a 24-hour return policy but all that has changed now because you can't try on something and then return it you know because of the risk of COVID-19 so um, a lot of people in that sector have had to change their terms and conditions you know they don't even want people coming into their clothing store anymore so this is a perfect solution for that sort of business um, and I also want us to just start to think about you know the type of business that you have the Flutter Wave store can work for any type of business actually so I'm giving an example of a supermarket a food store a clothing store all you need to do is open the Flutter Wave account um, set up your Flutter Wave store Upload images, you can put details of those images, so you can put the sizes, you can put the weight, all those details you can put um, on the Flutterwave store. And then you can just send that link to your customers via WhatsApp, or you can post the link on your Instagram bio, you know, your Twitter um, handles, you can do all that publicity. And then once people click on that link, they're able to see the list of all the products that you have for sale. They click on it and then they're able to make their purchase. So um, without wasting much time, I just want to show us a very, very short video of how you can set up your Flutterwave store 
And um, it's actually very simple, very seamless. Like I said earlier, in less than five minutes, you're able to do all this. Um, but don't just take my word for it. Let me show you the video and then you see how that works. Okay, um, one second. And I have a product designer at Flutterwave. I want to walk you through what we've been building for the past couple of days. Welcome to my dashboard. I'm going to walk us through two processes. The first process is how to set up your store and add products to the store. The second process will be how your customers will pay you and use your store. So I'm going to click on the store. Um, by default, you have no products or store. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my own store now. My business name is my store name by default. I'm going to go and change mine to something else. I'm going to go with drinks and let's see, fun. You'll notice that I updated my store URL to reflect my store. You can only have one store on your Flutter Web account. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add just one product. It's good to know that you can have more than one product. I'm going to go ahead and call this Tiger Nut Milk. Tiger Nut Milk goes for about 1,000 naira right now. Milk that's made from other notes. I'm just going to go with 738 and I have 10 items in stock. Next step is to take my store online. Now my store is online. I am going to proceed to the customer page, which is basically your storefront. As you can see here, drinks and fun is the name of my store. Flutterway store demo is the name of my account. We have here the description of my store. Um, as you can see, Tiger Nut Milk. I'm going to go ahead and add two bottles of Tiger Nut Milk. Click on pay. I'm going to go ahead and refill this. Now we have a lot of payment options. You can give your customers a lot of payment options. Okay. Right, so um, that's it basically, just showing you how easy it is to set up your Flutterwave store. Um, you can do that in less than five minutes. And then I was saying that Flutterwave store also comes with delivery integrated. So what that means is um, we've partnered with delivery companies to handle the delivery for you. So all you need to do as a business owner is just set up your store, um, the delivery is calculated and included to the cost of the item. And um, once the payment is made, you get a notification, um, the customer gets a notification, the delivery company gets a notification, and then they can just go ahead to your location to pick up the order and send directly to the customer. So details of every payment made on the Flutterwave store is available on your dashboard. You can log into your Flutterwave dashboard to see all the details of every payment made. And then you can also use that information um, to contact your customer for other analytical um, engagements. Just like Janet talked about earlier, you have, um, you're able to send them messages. So if you have any discounts coming up or you have um, a promo, you're able to engage them. So the advantage here is um, rather than when you have like a physical location and then the customer just comes, buys and goes and you don't have any data about customer with this, you're able to reach out to the customer, um, let them know um, if you have any promos coming up or if it's just to check up on them, find out how they're doing. So that's another advantage of the Flutterwave store. Um, right, so that is, I think we will be able to take the questions now. Um, yeah, that's it. Wendy, over to you.
Okay, we're going to go through questions. We have a few. Um, so I'm just going to pass each question to whoever um, is going to answer the questions. Um, first question is, can we have this PowerPoint presentation after this section? Yes, we will be sending this out. Um, you might have missed the intro in the beginning where I said we will be sending this out via, in, um, via email. So that should be sent out by Wednesday. Um, okay. Um, the next question is, this is for Janet. Um, say I am an individual that has a company with two products. How do I create social media presence that covers me as an individual, my company, and the individual products of the company? The answer is actually very simple, personal branding. Focus on how you can grow yourself as a brand. Because I, I believe most of the businesses have actually grown out of the individuals who represent them well through their brands. That's actually, I'm here on behalf of Africa Tweet Chat as Janet Machuka. In one way or the other, my business is Africa Tweet Chat, ATC Digital Academy, and I'm Janet Machuka. But as much as I have a business and an individual brand, I'll have to constantly try to bring them together every time I represent myself somewhere. So it will be actually very easy if you focus on your personal brand. Make sure that you be, you're part of the request to be part of the webinars if you feel like you haven't yet been recognized. We have so many platforms you can actually appear. Reach out to individuals who have already grown in that particular way and then ask them how to go about it. That's the best answer I can give. Okay, thank you very much, Janet. Um, the next question is, someone's asking, when's the best time to post on Instagram? Allow me to share my, my screen. Okay. I just added something, and I believe I, I will add some other things before I share this, uh, the, the power presentation to you so that they can be able to access them. Can you, uh, is, okay, just a minute. I believe everyone can access this. Can you see it from your side? Yes, I can see it. Okay, so the best times to post on Instagram, actually I, I used this HubSpot report just to show you some of the best uh, times according to uh, HubSpot. So they, they just put them in the global best times to post on Instagram. But as much as they can give us such a uh, Times sometimes you might realize that that our businesses are different, and the way we the way we engage with our audiences are different. So it is actually okay for you to always check on your analytics, at least to know when are your audience when is your audience most active on the social media platforms, and from there you can be able to at least see which times are you going to post. And uh, yes. That's it. So in short, you can use these. Uh, you, uh, once you'll be shared to the slide, you'll be able to see these times. But the best way to go about it is kindly always check on your analytics every time you post so that you can see when is your audience most active. OK. That's it. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, um, Zainab, this question is for you. Um, a few people are asking, um, how do I opt in from our Flutterweb account to Google My Business? And then the second question is, well, I think you can answer that question first, first then I'll, answer, I'll ask you the second question. You're on mute. <laughs> so um, after this webinar, we're gonna send um, an email, I think tomorrow. The link is gonna be contained in that email. So the link to opt in to um, Google My Business, uh, but like I said earlier, you need to be an active FlutterWave account holder to be able to opt in. So um, yeah, so tomorrow you get the email, and then the email would contain a link that says opt in to um, be listed on Google My Business. Okay, thank you, um, Janet. This question is for you. Which is preferable, having a client send the testimony for you to put up on your pages, or have them post the testimony and link into their post? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Apologies for that. We have different ways actually you can approach it. And um, one, you can actually, uh, 
for Twitter, it's very easy because you can post and share. For Instagram, uh, Twitter, you, Instagram, you can repost. On LinkedIn, you can share. On Facebook, you can share. But if it was sent, for instance, on WhatsApp, sometimes you'll have to screenshot. But it's always good if you ask them to give their consent. And uh, as much as they can share, no, you can leverage on both. There are, some in, there are some individuals who give their experiences and in one or the other, if they shared it on their platform, it will, it will be more of, um, how can I say, it will cause, it will have more influence and it will reach more people than when the brand page can post. Or you can, the brand page can post and then you ask the person to share or comment something about it, at least so that both of them can be able to leverage on the, on the two audiences. Thank you, Janet. Um, Zainab, I think you should answer this question. We have a few questions about people or people asking our Flutterway store. Um, someone is saying that when do they when do they get paid or when do they get their settlements essentially? And then another person is asking that um, do the, does the, like do, do they get paid before the courier picks up the items from them for delivery or Flutterway store? Okay, um, so good question um the first question is by default okay so another thing i need to mention is um the integrated delivery option is actually optional you don't necessarily have to go with that so if you have um like your own delivery uh service already mapped out and it works fine you can decide to go with your own delivery service so the integrated delivery option that we've got is optional um by default your settlement is next business day um for local cards so if i do a transaction on um sunday for example your settlement would be on monday and um, settlement by default again is into the bank account which you specify now there's some customers that say okay i don't want settlement into my bank account i want settlement into my flutterwave wallet so we would settle into your flutterwave wallet and then you can now move the funds to any bank account of your choice. Uh, people that mostly opt for settlement into their wallet are people that want to also do transfers to other people that they want to uh, make payments to. So they want all the funds to be pulled into their wallet and then they now move the funds out to settlement by default as the next business day. Now, um, in terms of delivery options, of course, um, there's going to be SLAs agreed at the point of onboarding. So um, if the delivery is... Um, if the delivery company is coming to pick up the next day, then uh, most likely settlements might be delayed to two days instead of the next business day. So all that is going to be agreed um, at the point of onboarding when you're signing up to use our delivery option. I hope I was Thank able you. to answer. Um, yes, yeah, so next question for you here is, I think you need to just do a little bit of clarification. Um, someone asked, can you shed more light on the Google My Business stuff? Does it mean that Flutterwave helps a business to be advertised on Google? If yes, what's expected for the business owners to benefit from this? Okay, so um, it's really just to let there be more visibility around your business. Um, I mentioned that it's free, so you're not paying anything to be listed on Google My Business. All you need to do is be an active Flutterway um, account holder. So how the listing works is you would get that email that has the link, like I said earlier. Once you click on the link, you're opting in right, to be listed on Google My Business. So it would have a Google representative reach out to you, get the relevant information, the relevant data, and do that listing for you, after which they hand over that um, Google account to you to manage. So what that listing does for your business is creating visibility on your business. So today, if a search is done on your business, um, like I said earlier, the chances are there probably will be no result showing your business, or even if there is, it might be way down at the bottom. Or if you're listed on Google My Business, right, that information is displayed right on the top 
it's um showing information about your business things like your address um phone number to call um work hours you can even upload products you know you can upload images you can put some posts about your business what you do all that information which before now ordinarily people are not able to access they are able to get all that information just by doing a google search and the beauty is they don't even necessarily need to type in your business name. So, for example, if you're someone who sells hair, you know, and you're in Lucky Phase 1, um, if you are listed on Google My Business, I can just go to, I mean, a, a customer can just be like, okay, do you know what? I live in Lucky Phase 1. I need to buy new hair because I have an event coming up or whatever. I can just go to Google and type in hair sellers around Lucky Phase 1. Because you are listed on Google My Business, your business profile will show up among the top, you know, one or two or three, depending on how, you know, that listing is done. But all that information would show up on the Google search because you're listed on Google My Business. So it's really just um, growing visibility on your business, um, creating more awareness and driving traffic to your business. So that's what um, Google My Business listing does for you. And again, to break eye to raise, it's free. We're not charging you for that. It's just a way of ensuring um, there's visibility and of course there's transactions going your way. Um, hope I was able to answer that. Thank you very much. Um, so this is another question. Someone is asking that, do they need a CAC certificate to open a Flutterwave store? That basically um, for a month now, the CAC website has been down and so they haven't been able to register their business. So do they need that? So to open the store, no, but you'd be required to um, upload those documents at some point. Um, to go ahead, you can actually go ahead and open the store um, and um, just, yeah, so, but it's going to be, you just keep seeing that option there that you need to upload your documents. So it's um, important to have them uploaded, you know, at some point, but you can go ahead, open the store and start transacting, even though, even though those documents are not um, readily available at this time. Okay, thank you. Um... Someone's asking, can someone who is into communication business also set up a Flutter store, Flutterwave store account? I am, yes, the answer is yes. It depends on how you want to sell. Um, you can also create, I mean, we also have other features available. We have invoicing and, and um, we have payment links that may be more suited if you're a little, if you're service based. Um, but if you have digital goods that you want to sell, you can do that with Flutterwave store. You should send us an email, um, hi at flutterwavego.com hi at flutterwavego.com or just hi at flutterwave.com and then we'll be able to answer any questions that you have we'll be able to assist you um yeah um okay this question is for janet so someone is asking two questions what is the average timeline to successfully build a brand i mean at what point do you expect to see real result results six months, one year, four years. Um, and then number two is, are Flutter services such as delivery available in all states in Nigeria? So I think Janet, you can answer the first question and then Zainab can answer the second question. Okay. First of all, uh, we talked about you finding uh, on these social media platforms where your brand is or where your audience is and uh, what kind of content do they consume, how do they consume it. And in one or the other, you might be having uh, customers already from the offline section and uh, you can, they are on social media, they are on the platforms on social media and you can easily find them because they ask questions or they, they follow. As have a time length for brand, sometimes it can be difficult to tell how long but when you're looking at the stages of uh, a marketing campaign, social media marketing strategy, usually give at least a timeline of uh, at least one month for you to do a very good, one to three months to do a very good brand awareness of if you just showed up on the social media platforms, not really showed up if you just opened the accounts. Um, after that time, you can be able to see if you're really getting something out of it. But as you continue doing brand awareness, at least for the three months, make sure that you, uh, you try to, by the second month, try all your best 
to include the engagement aspect, include the leads, because in each and every marketing step on social media, in one or the other, you can get a can convert even the first phase at the first phase when you're doing marketing. So I can't really tell for how long. It depends what, what your strategy looks like, uh, which kind of experts or people are you using, uh, which social media are you on, or how are you already known as a brand of the social media before you joined? Thank you very much, Janet. And the second question is for you, Zena. Um, okay. The second question is, are flutter services such as delivery available in all states in Nigeria? Yes, they are. So, um, like I said earlier, we partnered with delivery companies that have reached all states. So, um, they are able to deliver to every state in Nigeria. Um, so, at the point of the customer making that order, there are uh, fields they need to put in. Um, capturing specific details of their location. So that's what the delivery company um, uses to. I think we lost Zainab. She's frozen at the moment. But yes, I think she's answered the bulk or the main gist of the question. Um, um, hi. Hi there. Yes, sorry. It, it got frozen for like a few seconds. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, so this question is for you, Zainab, and then I have two questions for Janet, and then we may have to round up because we are 17 minutes over time. So Zainab, um, who fixes this mm -hmm. delivery charge? Is it Flutter Wave or is it the customer? If it's the customer, how do we know the delivery charges amount for the logistics company? So the delivery charge is fixed by the delivery company, not by Flutterwave. Um, um, so there's an algorithm. Remember I said at the point of setting up your product, you're going to have to put in the weight and all yeah. of that. So the weight and then the location and then also your own location. All that is um, the algorithm that calculates the delivery charge. So that's um, the integration that we've done back in with the delivery company. So yeah, the delivery company sets the delivery charges. So what was the other question? Um, this another question is um, someone was asking what is our delivery radius in Kenya? How many towns will be covered? Um, I might not be able to confirm for Kenya at this time. We're working with in Kenya. We're working with Sandy, and we're integrating Sandy so that people are able to do delivery. So whatever their radius is, what we're going to cover while we work on getting more delivery partners. Because I know that it's we know that it's important for us to have delivery worldwide. So right now we're working with Sandbox and with Sandy in Kenya to ensure that this is available to everybody. Um, Yes, so for everyone that is asking about international deliveries and interstate deliveries, our delivery partners are able to do that at the moment, um, but we are working with getting more log logistics partners and delivery partners. I think that, that kind of answers all the questions. I've seen quite a few questions about delivery. There's no charge for setting up a Flutterwave store. It is completely free. You just need to have a Flutterwave account to create your store. And the way that we charge you is by charging a transaction fee. So we charge a transaction fee for Flutterwave, for your Flutterwave account. So which means when you make a transaction, we charge a transaction fee. But we don't charge you for owning a Flutterwave store. That is a free product. Um, okay. So next question is for Janet. Um, is it possible to grow a business without having a face for the business? I mean, I'm, beh I'm a behind the scene kind of person. So is it possible to have a successful brand online without a face? Okay, thank you for that question. Uh, when you're growing a business, remember you're not the only person as the face. You have the employees and you have people who are within uh, your business. Sometimes as an individual, you would like not like being at the face and maybe you want the people around you to be the ones now presenting or representing your your brand so it's actually very possible 
so long as you package it well and you you package to them well so that it can be easier for them to focus more on people not only the uh, not only the, the the face of the brand that is you the founder yeah i believe it's very possible i have seen some people who have actually we know the brands but we don't know the founder yeah that's a fair point okay um yeah so i mean i mean there are also different types of brands out there there are some brands that are built around the individual and then there are some brands that are built around the ethos of the brand. so there is no face of nike right they employ a lot of people to use to be like representatives of the brand but there is no singular face of nike so but you know what Nike stands for and you know what they do and stuff like that. So you kind of have to make a decision, but I don't think that you have to be the face of your brand for you to have success, basically. Um, okay, so we may not be able to get through all the questions because I see that we have a lot of questions. So I'm gonna ask Janet one more question and then we'll take it from there. Um, hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so the next question and the last question that we're gonna take is, Janet, um, you mentioned that we can encourage our employees to share their experiences about products and services we deal with. Do you really think people will believe such posts are genuine if they know the post was shared by an employee? Wendy, I think you froze for us in there. Sorry, um, I was saying, um, you mentioned, this question, this final question is for Janet. Um, you mentioned that we can encourage our employees to share their experiences about products and services we deal with. Do you think people will believe in such posts or do you think they'll be genuine if it was shared by an employee? Okay, you know, before you try, don't say no before you try. Sometimes you just have to try and see how people will perceive it. Cause there are some actually brands which people believe more on the on the employees and i know in one or the other i'm sorry i i got cut off i don't know <laughs> um my internet is embarrassing today but um sorry that Janet, did you go through the question did you answer the question i yeah the question i've already answered it only that i have seen a couple of questions actually i've been following through and i believe there are some of them we haven't answered i just wanted to answer them um yeah. quickly Somebody asked, what is the best time to do digital marketing? Uh, look at digital marketing as a point, from the point where you open that social media page for your brand, you are already kicked off marketing. Sometimes we do marketing knowingly and unknowingly. Sometimes people forget and look at advertising as marketing. They forget marketing they, they look at advertising as when you start marketing and then they forget marketing that uh, from the point where you start sharing that content about that brand those products those services so it can it starts that very time you log into your social media as a brand and then start engaging people talking to them because in one way or the other you'll have to build the relationship grow the engagements the conversations to be always uh, up and then at the, at the end of the day you can be able to create leads and conversions somebody asked on how many times to post on twitter instagram facebook and linkedin uh, most of the time i usually look at twitter as a place where you can post more so the best number of tweets you can actually the most number of tweets you can do on twitter are from six to eight in a day for Instagram, you can do one post on the feed, but on the stories, you can do as many as you want, but don't overdo it because people don't like staying on a certain WhatsApp or Instagram or Facebook story for long. On Facebook, Facebook page, you can choose to do two, two in a day, two in a day, but even if you do one, that is okay. And the days for, I'll still repeat on Instagram, there is a, in the slide, you'll be sent the PowerPoint presentation. There are some days I shared there, but on Facebook, and I, I actually, if it seems like you joined in late, there is a section I was talking about the time to post. And I tried to, on Instagram, you can use as many as you want, but as long as they are in line 
uh, with what you're posting. There is something we talk about, there is something we call relevance. Don't just add a hashtag because you have to add it. Add a relevant hashtag to, uh, to, to the post that you made, to the photo you attached, that video. Uh, so you can use as many as you want on Facebook. On Facebook, I will actually like to, to read a post that has at least one or two posts. I know uh, one or two hashtags, but if it has many, sometimes it might look so ugly and kind of dirty. On, his, on Twitter, I said used to, and that's the best. Just used to. Uh, yes, oh, maybe the last question. Best tool to, to use so that you can, you can post from one point and then it goes on the other social media platforms. Okay. This is uh, where you talk about the tools and currently as much as we will want to look for free tools, we have to, buy, to pay for them to some extent because um, they want to make money too. So the best one you can go with is HubSpot but you have to include a budget. Um, Jane, you talked about scheduling tools. Oh, scheduling tools. Yes, are there some that you can recommend? Oh, yes, yes. For, for tw Twitter, we have a, a free one that is TweetDeck. You can use that. Uh, for Instagram, Facebook, and the others, LinkedIn, you can use Hootsuite, you can use um, HubSpot, Steel, Talkwalker. The good thing about most of these tools, currently they have been integrated to a point where they can do the social media listening, they can do the scheduling, they can do the analytics at the same time, uh, the, the posting, scheduling and the posting. So it's good, it's better to, to look for at least one or two so that it can be easier for you to manage your work. Okay. Um, I don't know if Wendy is still with us. Hi, sorry, I'm I'm having internet issues. So, um, Zainab, you can just wrap up, and then we can. All right. So, um, that's it for today. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, special thanks to Janet for um the very insightful and educative presentation um i see a lot of people asked for the presentation and um, if they will have access to the webinar the answer is yes um, just like wendy said earlier we would share a link um before close of business tomorrow that would have um, the materials that janus has presented as well as um, the recording of this webinar so um janet thank you very much um for honoring our invitation and to all of the attendees thank you so much as well if we were not able to answer your question please feel free to send an email to hi at flutterwavego.com and you would get a prompt response so the next um, webinar will be holding next week monday um stay tuned you get um, more information about that on your emails all right thank you so much thanks everyone Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Dika Chim. Thank you, Janet. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can follow me on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Janet Machuka underscore. I'm verified, so that is easier for you to notice. Uh, me and Africa Tweet Chat. That is uh, my baby, where we usually talk about business and digital marketing every Wednesday. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.